Hello everyone from Lesmedi. Today we are here with Dr. Abdullah Shishik, one of the our bariatric surgeons. Hello doctor, how are you? Hi Luna, thank you and you? Yes, we are perfect. So thank you for accepting our invitation. You're Today welcome. we will ask you some questions about your personal life and the bariatric surgery. If you are ready, let's start. Okay, please. Doctor, is every operation recorded? If yes, why? As you know, all the bariatric procedures are done laparoscopically, so we use a camera in this method, so we always record our surgeries. There are some reasons, It's one is ethical reason, the second reason is if there is a problem after the surgery, we want to see the surgery again and if needed decide for anything. But if the question is that, are we giving the Quartz to the patients after surgery, I think it's it's not possible. If needed, it's for the health of the patient, for the surgeons. Okay, it's my turn. What's your daily routine as a bariatric surgeon? I want to ask that. It's harder question for me. <laughs> we start a day very earlier. First of all, we will be at hospital around 7.30 in the morning. Oh, it's too early. Yes, uh, and you know, we live in Istanbul and before going to hospital, we have uh, 30 minutes of traffic. It's also hard for us <laughs> <laughs> before everything. And uh, we will start our day with visiting our patients. We see all the patients that who had surgery before and who are ready for the surgery of that day. After visit, all the preparations done for the patients. We call our patients with a queue to the operating room. And around 3 p.m. in the afternoon, we will finish all the work in the hospital. We will visit our patients again for a last check, end of the day. And we will have some controls in the hospital, not only the surgery, our work, and we will meet our patients again. And around 6 p.m. we will finish our work and we will go to our home, to our family. <laughs> wow. Next question is about pregnancy. So, should patient give birth and have surgery, or should patient get pregnant <laughs> after the surgery? Which one do you recommend? You know, these surgeries are laparoscopic. I mentioned in these surgeries, we are working on stomach and small intestine, especially. But the uterus is in the downside of our abdomen, so pregnancy is not a problem, especially for the surgery but another subject is anesthesia we don't perform any patient who is pregnant we don't perform a surgery because they will have general anesthesia and the general anesthesia affects the baby but if the question is about after surgery after surgery a new period about patients weight loss starts so in this period having getting pregnant may be dangerous for baby's health so our recommendation is to get pregnant after around one year from surgery but sometimes in our practice we are hearing about our patients that get pregnant after three months after four months from the surgery most of these patients finish the pregnancy without any problem the only issue is that they will be checked and they should be checked and they should be controlled very close in this period by a gynecologist and obstetrician and also they should follow up the rules about their nutrition in this period. I'm going to ask one more personal question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are the best and worst parts of being a surgeon? Yeah, I think being a surgeon, maybe I'm speaking this because it's my job. I love my job very much. So it's something hard that uh, most of your time is in the hospital in this job. We can meet with our family very, very less time in a day this is the bad thing i think but i enjoy my job very much because surgery is our lifestyle i think by a lot of years when we see that some patient benefits 
from your treatment, especially we are performing weight loss surgeries. So the results can be seen very, very clear in our surgeries. Maybe after three months, after six months, patients lose around 30% of the initial weight. So we can see the results. We can see that a lot of additional diseases treated. There is no disease. They left their pills. This is the happiness, I think. I enjoy this. The best side of our job is this, I think. Actually, this is a life-changing process. We are seeing so much before after photos about our patients. And that's yes, and another thing to be a bariatric surgeon is that in, in our country and I think in all around the world, bariatric surgeons differ from other surgeons because bariatric surgeons are very famous. All the patients <laughs> have behaviors to their surgeons as a pop star. You yes. are a pop star uh, <laughs> yeah. when you yes, do yeah. lots of surgeries, you became a pop star. So I think this is your lifestyle and you cannot leave this anymore after you see this condition. Yeah, this is so true because you change their life. Yes. That's why they are doing like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Why you don't recommend bypass above 50 BMA? I think this is not a true question. We can recommend bypass uh, above 50 BMI. But in my opinion, to have a bypass with a patient over 50 BMI is not a good option. It's not mandatory not to do bypass, but it's not a good option because a bypass is a complex procedure rather than this gastric sleeve. Gastric sleeve is easier and the adaptation of the patient is patient after surgery is higher and the weight loss results are similar between two surgeries you have two way one is easier and one is some complex so we want these patients to choose the easier one because in some patients it's around 10 percent a second option will be needed in the future if your choice in the first surgery is bypass that way will be closed there is no way maybe for some patients but if the first way that you chosen is gastric sleeve there is another way to solve the problem so answering to your questions i think the patients who have bmi over 50 and the very younger patients are the group that i don't recommend bypass surgeries in the first line but it is not forbidden. It is a misunderstanding, okay? Okay, thanks so much. Do you have any hobby? Yes. Uh, I'm asking like this question because <laughs> our patients want to know more about you, mm -hmm. Dr. Abdullah. Okay, thank you for this question. I like playing football first. I like watching football match. I'm a fan of Galatasaray from <laughs> Turkey. Yes. Most of my friends know me as a good fan, my team. And especially every week, maybe in two weeks, we play football with our team. We win mostly. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the hospital team. <laughs> yeah. So, and I like jogging also in the weekends. I think these are my hobbies. Uh, in the before, I was reading book too much, but nowadays I'm very little time to read this. Okay, why do patients use breathing exercise device? Why do patients need that? Okay, you know we are performing surgeries under general anesthesia and general anesthesia in, is performed with an endotracheal tube. We put a tube inside your throat and the anesthetic medication goes through the tube into your lungs and by your inspiration, by your breathing, you can take this medication and you sleep during the surgery. So the lungs are the most important organ that's affected during the general anesthesia during the surgery. After awaking from the surgery, we should keep open the lungs, the alveoli. So the most common problem in the first days after surgery is called atelectasia and it is the closing of the alveoles after surgery. So doing breathing exercise is very important, especially in the first week, to keep open all your lungs. When you keep your lungs open, you increase your oxygenization and the high levels of oxygen 
makes better the wound healing and the recovery period becomes faster and so this is one part of the medication one part of the treatment the breathing exercise in the first days after surgery okay uh, how long after the operation should they stop uh, we recommend one week especially 10 uh, 7 to 10 days after surgery to do this exercise okay thanks so much